Cause if you got it, you want it forever. Hey y'all, what's up? This is your girl, Model E. Of course, thank you for tuning in to another bi-weekly episode with your girl. Guys, guess what? It is almost the end of the year. And you guys know what I do every year. This is the end of the year review. This time has came by so fast. I mean, so much has happened during the year. And you guys know when I do my end of the year podcast, I want you guys to always set some goals for yourself. You know, things that you want to do, things that you want to accomplish. And also, if you have accomplished some stuff, yes, power up, bigs up to you. Make another goal, make something else happen. All right. So we do one goal, put it to the side. We do another goal, put it to the side, just like that. Now, a lot of times I know it's more easier said than done, but if you know, if there is anything that you want in life and you want to achieve and be positive at it, or at least try to be positive at it, you got to do it. I know it's hard. Trust me. I'm telling myself this to me too. Okay. Because I know it's hard, but guys, it's the end of the year. 2023 came in and it swooped by us just like that. So with that being said, I want you guys to continue to tell a friend about the podcast. I am all excited about you guys and how you spread the word. You guys have shown me so much love over the years on this podcast and also on this platform, not just talking with E, but all the other podcasts that we have. You guys have been a godsend. Um, I love the communication that we have. Keep talking to us, putting that input out there. And also we're on YouTube at GWUN Space Network. Go to YouTube, check us out. Leave your comments there too. We love those. Our YouTube is growing and we have you to thank for that. So make sure you continue to follow me on Instagram at eInferencePod and on Twitter at Erica Jones with a Z on the end. That's right. You know, I never knew why I did that, but I guess I wanted to be different because it's so much Erica and it's so much Jones out there. So I said, why not put a Z on the end? And it kind of rolls off the sound real good too. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, for this first show for tonight the first show <laughs> the first um conversation that I want to talk about tonight is about women and us being on tv and how they kind of you know portray us to be sometimes but also at the same time how we make ourselves looks okay. of, um thug Tupac caricature that completely eliminates the ability to express our intelligence, our creativity, and our need to not only protect, provide, but actually nurture a woman in a place where she can feel safe to be who she is. Mm. And then on top of that, you can't point to a reality show that does not have somebody who does not look like us at the helm, up to including the love and hip hop ones, because everybody focuses on how bad Mona Scott is, but nobody says anything about Jim Ackerman. <laughs> How do you feel about reality TV? Right. I hate it. Let's go ahead and start over. It destroys the image of black women in America. As the black woman goes, so goes black society. You would be hard pressed to find a show where you actually see black women who are actual entrepreneurs, not some fun little boutique in the mall, not a it's kiosk, some, not some. I've got but an eyelash for the most line, part, but we are actual like entrepreneurs. That. You know what you do see though? A bunch of women who are throwing drinks at each other, talking bad about each other, talking about each other, smiling in each other's faces, backstabbing, and then that image goes out into the world. So then you wonder why so many black women are quote unquote not protected not respected mm. treated like the animals you wonder mm. why when you go to a hospital they say oh she don't need anesthesia you're strong and independent because that's the image that's out there you're loud you're boisterous mm. you're wee wig wearing you got to snuffle up against eyebrows out the hair you got a bbl Ooh. that's killing you and your thighs don't match and then let's not get started on what they do to black men they're either completely emasculated or there's some type of um thug tupac caricature 
that completely eliminates the ability to express our intelligence, our creativity, and our need to not only protect, provide, but actually nurture a woman in a place where she can feel safe to be who she is. And then on top of that, you can't point to a reality show that does not have somebody who does not look like us at the helm, up to including the love and hip hop ones, because everybody focuses on how bad Mona Scott is, but nobody says anything about Jim Ackerman. I repeat, you guys heard that. I had to repeat that. But let me tell you something. One thing that he just said, and I've listened to this clip numerous of times, but I have not clicked on what he said until just now. When he said, when Black women go to the hospital to have a baby, we they figure we don't need anesthesia because we portray as this strong woman. And I'm going to tell you guys something about this. And I hope that this wasn't the case for me. But when I was in the hospital having my second baby, I I didn't have no anesthesia the first time. And um, no, I didn't have it the second time. But on the second kid, he was a stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. He didn't want to come out. And the contra- the contractions would come. And I will push. And it seemed like he would just stop. I will push. And then we will have to stop. I will push. And then he will have to stop. To the point of where I was like, okay, I think I'm going to need something here. And we told the nurse to go ahead and get us um, some, um, some stuff to go in the IV, right? And... Um, it never came. I never got it. And I'm not sure if she forgot about it or she never really heard us say it, but I went ahead and I had that baby. And first of all, I told them that I was about to have this baby and they didn't believe me. They say, no, you're not to have this baby. You're still such and such and immunodilated. Okay, well, it feels like I have to shit. So I'm going to have this baby. She comes in and she looks, somebody call a doctor. She's about to have this baby. Have I just told you I'm about to have this baby? But I had the baby natural. And then I had no anesthesia, um, you know, n- no epidural, anything like that. It was just boom. And I really hope that wasn't the case. I'm I'm not going to think that was the case because I had a, a very great um, labor and delivery for both of my kids, even though they were at um, two different hospitals, but I still had a great delivery process. So, but back to uh, the conversation, when we see love and hip hop Atlanta, love and hip hop New York, we do see a lot of us black women and they are throwing drinks on each other. They are constantly arguing like cats and dogs at each other's neck. And I've always said when it's my time to become on a reality show, I'm not going to do any of that. And I know I may have to do a little things to, you know, get out of my character a little bit, but I'm not going to go as far as throwing these drinks and just have meaningless and countless fights with these women, because that's not what I'm about. And I don't want to have to sell myself out to drama in order to get ratings and to get people to look at the show. And plus, I always have this thing in my mind that people believe you are the character that you play so if I go on tv and I act a donkey they gonna see me on the street and be like oh that's that jackass right there no I'm not that is not me who is on that tv that you guys watch so whenever you know I'm on the show I will definitely be myself I'll be a little you know crazy sometimes but and that just be me, but I'm not going to be throwing no drinks at no one's face. Um, I'm not going to um, get on y'all again about the eyelashes. The eyelashes are cool. I'm not a person who don't have like a whole lot of eyelashes, but I have learned over time that if you put mascara on enough, it will plump up your lashes. I'm not, I don't really care about that. That's not my thing. But a lot of women has these big caterpillar, um, whatever it's called, 
um, eyelashes and sometimes it's a bit too much. Like you can't really see your face because of the lashes. But if that's what you like, that's what you like. And when he says, when he talks about um, women, you know, having business, being entrepreneurs, and yes, they're selling eyelashes and things like that. I don't think it's nothing wrong with that because it is a business. It's someone, they are doing something, is benefiting them, and it's benefiting to their clients who they serve. You're not out there selling drugs. You're not out there dealing drugs. You, you're not doing any of that. You're not doing anything negatively to hurt the community. You're actually doing something positive. So I don't knock anything down that people do positive, you know, entrepreneurship. I don't do that. So that part, I really didn't, you know, agree. But um, BBLs. Um, yeah, you're going to hear you getting thicker butts and it don't match your thighs. Yes. You can count out so many women, but oh yeah, she got fake ass because it doesn't match or your butt don't really jiggle the way that it's supposed to the whole natural way. And, um, if that's what you want, okay, that's cool. Now the other shows, you know, yes, you have, um, the housewives of, um, Potomac, and um you know the white ones and they get a little rowdy too don't get me wrong they throw drinks too I used to watch those as well and they just not um seeing negatively as how we do but they do it too they just don't um, show them as much as how they do black people and so, um, you know, it's okay. But as a, you know, as black women, we do get, you know, bad reps a lot of time of how we act and we can't really blame the producers. You know, you can always opt out to say no, what you don't want to do, or you can opt out to not do that role. But, um, we do a lot of times tend to, um, get generalized, um, in certain roles and stuff. And that's why the other parties look at us the way they do sometimes because of you know how we act and a lot of time it is embarrassing I get embarrassing sometimes when I'm just out regular in the street I'm not I'm not even a celebrity but when I'm out in the street and I see women come out with bonnets on their head they have these um, big pajama pants that had the words written on the back across the butt and on the side of the leg um and you got your slippers on it just makes me feel like you're going to go back home and you're just going to go jump back in the bed the same way. And that's nasty and it's unsanitary. Um, I think you should carry yourself, you know, in a, in a very hold another manner when you're outside. I'm not saying you got to put on lipstick and makeup, but, you know, look the part, you know, just, I'm not saying you got to put on a suit either, but, you know, just kind of clean yourself up a little bit, you know? All right. So that that's what I'm going to say about that. I know a lot of you is probably going to be like, you know, girl, you need to cut that out. You just know that just how we do that just our community and that's okay. But at the same time, when you want to make an impression and a good impression, because the first impression can always kind of be your last impression so yeah if any of you guys see me and I'm out in the street I'm not gonna look totally homeless I'm not sometimes I'm gonna be in joggers but it's gonna be the same jogger shirt and pants that I can wear outside and not the ones that I wear on the inside and that's just that you know that's just me and um, and a, a lot of men talk about this, about how um, a lot of us women, how we dress and look when we go out in the street and we down them for that. And I don't think that we should because a lot of times they do, they have a point. A lot of the men's want to see us natural and it's okay to want your nails done, have uh, weave in your hair, have some eyelashes on. That's okay to do that. But if a man says, honey, you are perfect the way you are and I want to see your naturalness a little bit sometime more, 
I, I don't I don't think anything wrong with that. I think we should give them that. That's the least that we can do, right? And um, and also how to treat the men like on these um TV shows. How do you treat the men? Yeah, I'm I'm not gonna even go that. <laughs> I'm not gonna even go over there because um sometimes the men get treated with so much disrespect. And and sometimes the men, okay, y'all be dirty too, you know, being with this woman and being with that woman. And now we're clashing because I know that you dealing with her and you dealing with me at the same time. So, you know, that's messy. But if you notice, a lot of the men kind of stay out the way. You may see them come in for a little while, but then they don't participate in all that action, like how the women do. And plus, when you watch these shows, a lot of these women aren't even married. They probably have been married to those men, but they're not even married anymore. So I don't even know why these things, you know, call love and married and shit because you ain't married. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to um, a different kind of generation. If you understand what I'm saying, it's very different out here. In this generation and i'm gonna go ahead and show y'all why listen to this oh i may need to cut it off right. so desperate for male validation and attention i used to have a thing with this boy now and this girl had a, a he white used to call me the friend and, and he called I her N-word and she kind of went along with it. Not only did he call me the N-word, but he wanted me to call him my master as a term of endearment, and I did. He'll it's be sick. like, what's up my little N-word or my little slave baby? <laughs> and I'd be like, hey master. Unsurprisingly, it funny. turned out he never liked me and I was just an inside joke between his friends. So y'all heard that, right? It turns out her ex-white boyfriend never really liked her. It was a joke to his friends. And the generation today is different. Now, she accepted that because she wanted to be accepted. She wanted to be validated. You know, she probably never had a boyfriend and that's what she wanted. So she let those things slip by. But, you know, any other women who are, you know, like me, God, that, that shit is not going to fly. We're not going to do that. But anyway, but what I do want to say is the generation today, like the kids, you know, born in the early 2000s, I hear how the way they talk. And they don't mind calling each other, you know, the N-word and stuff to each other, like, it's okay. It's literally okay. And I'm sitting here. I'll call you in a minute. Okay. All right. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, really? Like we would never let that fly. We can say the N word like to each other, but we would never let someone of another race call us that. So this young woman, she was, you know, so happy to have a, a boyfriend and he was like, you know, come here, my little, and she will call him, you know, hey, yes, master. Like, you know, we kind of play with stuff like that between our own, but we don't allow anyone to do that to us. And she still was laughing and smirking about it. Like it was funny. Homegirl, it is not funny. So I'm hoping someone, you know, talk to her and let her know that, that is not cool. You know, that is racist and that is the racism that still sits here today. And I I'm not going to get into like the whole interracial thing because a lot of them do love each other. And, and a lot of white women tell their family that, hey, this is who I am with and this is how it's going to be. Cool. But it is some up there who just want um to be accepted and doesn't care what the conversation is. 
And um, I just can't believe that this young woman wants to, you know, and allow this. It's still laughing about it. You know, I just think that is, I, that is past toxic to me and I don't understand, but I really hope that she figures out that that is not the right move. And I think you should find a young man that who respects you for you and, you know, loves you for you. Yes. Get one. And I'm going to call you in a minute. Okay. All right. I got a guest for you guys. So. They're so happy to be on the show. <laughs> but yes, this generation is different. The way that they talk to each other and stuff, I don't get it. And I won't never get it. You know, to to hear them, you know, they be on the games and they be calling each other, you monkey. I mean, I don't, they don't say it to each other, but they just say those words and certain little words kind of, you know, it resonates with me. And I'm like, ah, right, you know what? You got to get off this. That ain't no friend. Oh, no, no, no. They're not talking about me. Nah. I don't like it. This generation is different. It's very different. <laughs> All right. So I have one more um, conversation for you guys. And this right here in particular was about Instacart. But it's kind of more of um, a safety thing to just be careful when you are getting these groceries and stuff delivered. On WREL tonight, right. a Fayetteville woman says she was sexually assaulted by her Instacart driver person. Uh, she was in her home on Rose Hill Road this Wednesday happened in Fayetteville, afternoon. North Carolina. She tells us an Instacart shopper dropped off her groceries, then said he would be right back. About 15 minutes later, she says he returned empty-handed, pushed himself uh, through the door, and then sexually assaulted her. The victim called 911. Fayetteville police confirmed they are investigating this. So all I was doing was paying for a service. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just want more women, especially if you're single, be more careful. I, I mean, I didn't see the red flags. She says that one of those red flags, you know, she this wasn't the first time that this woman had been in contact with the Instacart shopper. She says she'd been assigned to him several times before, though he didn't seem to be the one to match the verified account. Instacart said that they've been in touch with her to offer resources and support, and they're working closely with Fayetteville police. All right. So. Instacart and not only Instacart. You have Uber, you have Lyft and everything, but um, let's go ahead and start on Instacart. This um, woman and, and this particular guy came to her several times. He did have conversations with her before asking her if she's single. Now that right there is definitely a red flag and is definitely a no-no. We are not going to have no types of conversation with each other except thank you. And... um. This guy, he dropped off her groceries and he came back about 15 minutes later and she opened the door for him and he went in and he raped her. Um, Instacart saying that, you know, they're doing everything they can or whatever, but as a woman and you're getting these services and stuff delivered, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. And, um, and especially when people, you know, are always and they see you single, you're by yourself, you are more prone to be a victim. So, yes, yeah, sometimes, excuse me. Hey, I'll call you. Go ahead and leave. Sometimes um, I do use these services and um, it's a great service. Because a lot of times you may not feel like going to the store or you may be sick or something. So you get somebody to shop for you and bring your stuff and bring it to your door. Or you have someone to shop for you and then you just go to the store and pick it up. These services are great. It's perfect for that. But when you have people who are desperate, desperate and is abusing the situation to make someone a victim, that's when it becomes a problem, okay? And so in this particular instance here, um, this woman, she was violated. And um, 
We just have to be careful. Now, I don't know if you guys um, have heard this before in the past, but um, it was a black woman. She, she was like in her 20s. She was very young. And she realized that her Uber driver was making eye contact with her. So he was making so much eye contact with her to the point where she became uncomfortable. And she realized that he passed the direction of her drop off. And she immediately thought that something was wrong. So at this point, she's like, okay, what do I do? Something might pop off here. What do I do? So she jumped out of the moving vehicle. Yes, she wore a bruise very bad, but she was not, you know, that badly injured where she really hurt herself. But she was in the hospital, you know, for bruises and stuff like that. And so, excuse me. Bye. Thank you. Go in your room. See, moms can't never do anything for themselves. Like, this is my moment. This is my mental moment to do the podcast. <laughs> I'm not going to have this certain little guest come on if he does not leave. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, but what made her thought that is because recently she has saw another Uber or Lyft driver where another young woman um, actually got hurt. And I think this woman had got um, abused and raped because her Uber driver had actually um, put something like he sprayed something into the air. And I think she passed out. And I think she recently read something about that. So she was very aware of the situation. Um, and a lot of people don't have a choice but to use, you know, these Uber and Lyft or bus, those transportations like that. And a lot of times we don't know who these people are. You know, we just trust that people are out there doing the right thing. And we know a lot of times they don't. So we just trust that they're doing the right things. And so when she saw that, she immediately said, you know, well, hey, I don't want to be a victim. I don't want anything to happen to me. I have to make a decision. So, you know, maybe the car wasn't going that fast. So she was like, you know, if I jump out, I'll survive. And I probably would do the same damn thing. Somebody continue to make eye contact with me. It's very sickening. <laughs> so, um, but she she had that in the back of her mind and that's why she did what she did. But when you are going back to the delivery services, the groceries and stuff, have them to leave your items at the door, ring the doorbell. And once they leave, or once you see them getting into their vehicle, then you can go out and get your um, packages. If anything is missing, trust me, you can always get on the app and say, hey, this was missing. They will either refund you or either the grocery store will have another service to come out and bring it to you. So um, you do have options. You don't have to go back because someone says that, hey, they left something. They can leave it on the porch, actually. They don't need you to come to the door and get it. They can just leave it and ring the doorbell and go about their business. And this woman lived in an apartment complex. So this person brought um, her stuff up. I think she said to the second or third floor. So... Um, just leave the stuff at the door. You don't need to come in my house. You don't always need to see me. None of that because we can't trust anyone. So, um, you know, I'm sorry that happened to this um, young woman. And I hope that, you know, in the future that she will be a little more careful and just have them to leave her groceries if she has no other choice to get those um, services um, being delivered to her. So, all right, guys. So this is coming to the end of the show and I might just go ahead and call my little guest appearance. Guest appearance, are you in here? Let's FaceTime him. Let's see if he has his, his FaceTime.
Hello, my little. Oh my God. Just come on in here, okay? Come and have a seat. Thank you. He was in the room. Can you guys believe that? He was in here the whole time. All right, come on, my little guest. Hello. Sit down. How are you? Good. Good. So what's been up? Hey, everyone. This is my son. Say hi. All right. So I, I will need you to spit your gum out until we finish this, okay? Yes, put it on the back of your hand. All right. Yes, we know no gum during podcasts. All right. So guys, this right here is my little special guest appearance. And he has some goals of his own for the upcoming 2024 year. Now, my son, <laughs> he wants me to call him son. Now. You can call me my. Oh. <laughs> it will be, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> All right. So this little guy here, he loves to stream and play games. And he also wants to have him a merch line. So can we tell the people about what do you want on your merch line? What what type of things do you want on your merch? Uh, I want my face on. Okay, your face. What else? Uh, well, I want my face on a sock. What on? Okay, so you want socks, shirts, and pants, and the pants too. Joggers. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's dope. And what about hats? Oh yeah. You like the little hats as well. I want my face on hat. You want your face on a hat? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other designs that you want on them? Mm. What are the I designs are they? So you want colorful stuff? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, no, not colorful. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about colorful stuff like blue okay. and stuff like that. You mentioned camouflage earlier. Yep. Okay. All right. And Watch. are you planning on having a website where people can go and buy your merch? Yeah. You having a merch? Yeah. All right. Well, no, come on back here real quick. No, come real quick because it's, oh, it is over. Right it is over. <laughs> no, it's fine. All right. So go ahead and tell everyone, um, you know, thank you for hearing and hope that in the future they can buy your merchandise. Don't do that. Don't do that. Go ahead. Tell everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And in the Everybody. future, I hope you can buy my merchandise. I hope. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. You can go ahead. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, guys. So that was my little uh, special guest appearance tonight. I believe he was a, a little shy. He wasn't like this when we uh, practiced this. <laughs> but I think he was a little shy. So and then that's to be expected. He's still little and he's still growing. But anyway, guys, I want you all to be careful. I want you to stay safe. I want you to be happy. And most of all, be profitable again in 2024. And I will see you again soon. Happy holidays.